America, Austin, Texas, and Bevo in Texas getting set for a huge game today, hosting Iowa State with major Big 12 implications. How big? Iowa State, if they beat Texas today, a virtual lock to play for the Big 12 championship for the first time. Meanwhile, for Texas, it's this simple. You win out, you too can play for the Big 12 championship. And with that, welcome into our coverage. Mike Golan Jr., Matt Berry, so happy to be a part of today's broadcast. Hope everyone had a happy and safe Thanksgiving. When you look at these two teams, talk about two programs, Texas, 28 conference championships. Iowa State hasn't played for a conference championship since 1912. And Golan Jr., like everyone out there today, trying to find themselves a bargain. The Cyclones did that two plus years ago with now their star tailback, Brees Hall. College football really is a story of it's not how you start it's how you finish and the star rankings only get you so far on campus the 66 ranked running back in his class but once you get here it's about what you do and what Brees Hall has done so far has his coach Matt Campbell comparing him to some pretty great names that he's coached in running back rooms before Kareem Hunt David Montgomery and you can see those comparisons in the open field an unbelievable player when it comes to making players miss and finishing great runs. There are those that believe Hall belongs squarely in the Heisman Trophy conversation. He gets a national audience today against Sam Ellinger. Senior day at Austin. Kickoff coming up after this message and a word from our ABC station. conference on ESPN senior day here in Austin and for one of the all-time greats their quarterback Sam Ellinger let's go down to the third member of our team and Chris Bud. Yeah, that's Sam Ellinger's final game here at DKR, the school he dreamed of going to. His dad, Ross, never got a chance to see him play in the burnt orange. He passed away in 2013. I spoke to Sam's mom, Jenna. She says he's not here, but I can feel his presence every game. When they're doing well, I'm cheering them, saying thanks. And when they need some help, I'm praying and asking him to step on in. Jenna said that it's been an emotional roller coaster watching Sam's career here. She was sad at first because she knows dad would have loved to see him play. She says now it's joyous seeing his teammates, the relationships with his coaches. And she'll be here for a long time because she'll get to watch Jake, who's a preferred walk on Sam's younger brother and sister Morgan hopes to cheer here one day. Chris, great stuff. The Ellinger name runs deep through this program and I know everyone associated with it says that Texas is better because of it. Iowa State has won the toss. They are going to defer to the second half, which means we will see Sam Ellinger and that Texas offense to get things started. And what's going to be a fun football Friday here on ABC and ESPN. Everyone settle in and enjoy it as that kick goes into the end zone. Sam Ellinger will take the ball at the 25-yard line of Mike Gullick Jr. This kid has the traits of a winning quarterback. He does, and it starts in the neck up with Sam. Tom Herman called him one of the smartest players he's ever coached. The way he's able to process information on the fly, put his team in a position to win. That's when it's working on schedule. He can also make it work and extend plays with his physical prowess, making guys miss in the pocket, and able to keep his eyes downfield, find open receivers, and get quick strikes for this offense. And when all else fails and you get him sniffing the goal line, Sam Ellinger is going to find pay dirt for you. Been 19 days since the last game for Texas, and they give the ball to the true freshman, Bijan Robinson, who's starting to find his way in this offense. We expect big things out of him this afternoon. Looks every bit of the part, and they've really gotten him juiced. Broke a big run to start the game against West Virginia. They need him to pick up where he left off, so this offense can operate the pace that they want to. Third rated running back in the country coming out in 2020. Tucson, Arizona. Now second and four, it's Robinson again up the middle. And it looks as if he'll have the first down for the Longhorns. Tackled on the play by Ashim Young. And moving the chains early now, we'll see if Mike Yursich in this offense can start to push the pace a little bit. Tempo is something that he has added coming over his first year as an offensive coordinator, and they want to give them the ability to use that speed to get these defenses off balance. Fourth start for Robinson. He's starting to get it as well. You see the young players come in, much like Ellinger did, starting to grasp what it is the Longhorns trying to do. First down and 10 now, ball at the 35. Ellinger gets the playoff, third play in the row for Robinson. He's going to be tackled after a gain of two by Mike Rose. 
who factors into the defense for the Cyclones throughout the day. But here you have Tom Herman, fourth season at Texas, trying to get the program to where they can get to that next level and win a Big 12 championship. He knows what it's about around here. He understands the expectations that come along with this program. And that's knowing what they've accomplished already so far, and that's him and Sam Ellinger in tandem. Ellinger going to throw for the first time today. Plenty of time, goes over the middle, has a receiver. That's Eagles caught. Texas brought down inside the five. That's the big play receiver, Brennan Eagles, and first and goal for the Longhorns on their first possession. Unbelievable job by Eagles using his big body to shield the defender, clear out space for that catch. Sam dropping into the bucket. Now a great chance to get Sam Ellinger involved in this run game down near the goal line. Tavon Kyle beat on the coverage. They're going to go with the run right up the gut. Bijan Robinson stopped at the one yard line. Tackled on the play by Lawrence White. Couldn't script a better start if you're Texas. Because now down here, you've got all the options in the world. We mentioned Sam Ellinger. This is a spot where against an Iowa State defense, that doesn't do a lot of things, but does them very well. If you can buy an extra blocker using that running back and get your quarterback involved, you get such an advantage down here this close to the end zone. So second and goal. Longhorns trying to punch it in on their first possession. Robinson tackled for a loss. A great play by Orion Vance and that Cyclones defense. This linebacker group so active for Iowa State. Mike Rose, number 23, who you'll see all over the field today playing like his hair's on fire, leads the charge for a group that's got a bow up near the goal line. So now third and goal. Ellinger swings it out, dropped by Robinson. And now Tom Herman, first possession of the game, is going to have a decision to make. And he made it pretty quick. They're going to go for the field goal. Shocked we didn't see Sam Ellinger in that run game involved down here. But you take the points. You got that start that you were looking for. Come out quickly and present a couple of different looks to Iowa State. Get your running back involved. Set a tone to start this game. Seven play, 72-yard drive. Cameron Dicker on for the field goal attempt. Snap clean, kick up and through. 21-yard field goal has Texas up after an impressive first drive. Yielded just three. Longhorns up, 3 up. For the Texas Longhorns, first drive of the game, 3 nothing over Iowa State, a marquee game, the Big 12. Matt Barry, Mike Golick Jr. alongside Chris Budden, third member of our team. And you look at the series history, it's been all Texas, although lately Iowa State's made up some ground, including a win last year. It's a big culmination point for them and for what Matt Campbell has built in this program at Iowa State. They've been the thorn in the side of so many teams in the Big 12. They're a team that can always catch you if you roll into a stadium sleeping. So Dicker to kick, Kanani Wangu, Jarrell Brock deep to receive for the Cyclones. That'll go out of bounds, and that's where we'll see Brock Purdy in the Cyclones offense for the first time. This player burst out of the national scene a couple of years ago, comes from good stock, and he's able to elevate this Iowa State program under Matt Campbell's vision. He has came into this season highly rated. We know the setback they suffered in week one, but especially as of late, really going back to the second half of that Baylor game, you've started to see the best of Brock Purdy come out. Hopefully more of that today for Cyclones fans. Coach Campbell said since the second half of that Baylor game where they came back and won 38-31, and then last week 45-0, he's really settled down into the expectations many of us placed on Iowa State in the preseason. But as you know, this offense stops and starts with Brees Hall and their star tailback. Going to be Hall, first carry of the game off the left side. Nothing doing, tackled immediately by the Texas defense. Josh Thompson on the tackle. Brees Hall, the centerpiece of this offense, but 
It's one that operates at a different pace. You're going to see all the shifts, the different motions, staggered a little bit, making use of a big tight end room that we'll get into plenty as this game goes on. And you love the tight end room. The coaches love the tight end room. Three of them that can do just about everything. Loss of one on the play, now second and 11. Purdy, incomplete, intended for Hall. This Texas defense has done a much better job lately. We mentioned different coordinators on both sides of the ball. Chris Ash comes in in year one. And when you don't have the normal offseason and the time to get used to each other, you've got to wait until you get to those live game reps to really settle in. They've done a much better job in recent weeks keeping the ball in front of them and coming up and making plays like we just saw from DeMarvey and Overshone. So now third and 11. And a great opportunity for the Texas defense. Purdy. Pressured, gets it off, caught. Sean Shaw on the reception, but he's going to be held well short of the first down, and that's an impressive start for the Longhorns defense. Three and outs, forcing a punt. And who else on the pressure but a name Texas fans are used to in Joseph Osai coming off of that right edge in a defense that's not going to blow you away schematically with exotics. But on third down, they'll get into some pressures. That time, you get a nice zone pressure. Osai gets a one-on-one -on -one and gets a great look at Purdy in their opening drive. So Joe Rivera to punt. Deshaun Jamison deep to receive for the Longhorns. And that's going to take a favorable bounce for Texas. So UT on offense, they drive down, get themselves a field goal. Defensively, a three and out. Good start for the Longhorns, who dug themselves an early hole this season with two losses back-to-back, -back, TCU and Oklahoma. Sam Ellinger, when we spoke to him this week, said despite the setback, Mike, we're still in a position to get to where we want to be, which is the Big 12 championship. There's no better feeling stepping into football in the month of November knowing you can control what happens with your team. That's the way you build it all year. And now for them, they get to settle in. Remember, Matt, this is senior day. And while it doesn't look like it normally would in a non-pandemic year, there's a lot of emotions in that first drive that you've got to weather, absorb, and get through. Good field position for Texas, 37-yard line. They give to Robinson off the left side. Bijan, a nice cut and a nice gain on first down. Tackled on the play by Anthony Johnson. This Texas offensive line doing a good job getting to the second level early. They've tried under offensive coordinator Mike Yurcich to be a bit more of an outside zone team this year. And with a back as talented as Bijan, you can see the results. The run enough for the first down. And again, it's Robinson. Steady diet of the true freshman early. Again, making his fourth career start. Able to get comfortable with this Yersich offense. And we had talked about it in the open. 19, 20-day layoff. Longest layoff since 1900. They said there was good and bad to it. Good, we got to practice. Bad, we got to practice. But for a young running back like Robinson, invaluable time. Ellinger the fake, going to look downfield again and a good throw to Eagles. Boy, did he put that on a dime to his big target, Brennan Eagles, the veteran of this receiving core. Great timing there on the route by Ellinger here. He looks in rhythm early on in this game and they've gone deep. This is an offense that likes to work the middle of the field with him, but we're already seeing some outside the numbers action. Here comes the tempo from Texas. And again, it's Robinson off the left side. What a great use of vision and power out of Robinson. Again, moving the chains. Texas back in the red zone for the second time today at a gain of 23. And just seeing, assessing, I mean, he's not getting touched until he's seven, eight yards down the field. This Texas offensive line gave up a little bit of penetration there. But so far today, Matt, when you've gotten them out and running, this group has been getting up and really making life difficult for the second level of these linebackers on Iowa State's defense. It is clear through 12 plays what their game plan is coming in. Bijan's touched the ball nine times, had a target in the, rec in the receiving game as well. So you're talking 10 out of 12 plays, they're leaning on the true freshman. Empty backfield now for Ellen. 
And a designed run for the quarterback, tried to pick up a block. He gets it, Sam Ellinger, touchdown, Texas. Two possessions, two scores, and it's the senior Sam Ellinger riding his big offensive line in an early 9-0 lead for UT. An outstanding job by this group up front to start the game. We talked about Sam Ellinger and what an active role in this run game. He plays the leading rusher for Texas's team coming into this game. But a great call there, great numbers and angles. That's how you win in the run game, and that's how Texas won on that touchdown. The Dicker extra point is good. And how about that for a start? Texas tells us they need to win out to get to the Big 12 championship. Senior Sam says no problem. Longhorns up 10-0. College football on ABC is presented by PlayStation 5. Play has no limits. And in part by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. Talked about Iowa State trying to win their first conference title since 1912, which is the longest active drought by a Power 5 team. And Matt Campbell certainly has this program headed in the right direction has built Iowa State consistently now into a team that's going to compete not only for conference championships, they find themselves in bowl games. He's done all the right things, says all the right things, and always finds his name on a short list when some of these other jobs open around the country. And so Matt Campbell's got Iowa State in a perfect position to try to win their first Big 12 championship, though down 10 nothing here midway through the first. Dicker's kick goes into the end zone, and let's go down to Chris Park. You know, one of the things Matt Campbell wanted to change about this year's team was getting them to play better in the second half. So he thought, what can I do? He always thought that the best teams work harder. He realized they actually need to work smarter. That includes giving your body some rest. They hired a new strength and conditioning pro coach to work on that recovery. Brock Purdy told me it's been a game changer, especially this week. When you think about it, they played Saturday, having to play on a Friday morning. He said that takes away two days of recovery. He said his body certainly felt that this week. Yeah, Chris, he would say second half of the season, they need to come out and finish better. He said, look, we're a bunch of D3 guys. We had to work hard, but that's not always the smartest approach as Hall takes it off the right side for a gain of two. And it's a tough mentality to try and get yourself away from because you see it taking place on this field, right? You look across and physically what Texas is always going to have at their disposal, the amount of talent they can bring in, the size of the bodies along the line. You're always going to be a little undersized and a little outmanned, but those modern innovations can be the difference from going to the next level like they want to. Campbell refers to it. He's like, look, we're not a five-star factory. We're a five-star culture, and it's worked, as does Purdy's pass there on second down, complete to Shaw. The gain of five, bringing up third and short, covered on the play by Chris Brown. And these third and short spots, I think, are when Iowa State can do the best job making use of this big tight end room. Charlie Kohler gets the headlines in this group, was a preseason All-American pick, but you can move them around. They can operate split out the way Charlie is now at the, in the inside of the formation and create big mismatches against this linebacker core. Dylan Sainer, Chase Allen, Kohler, great tight end room for the Cyclones. Now third and three, trying to extend this series. Caught and able to get away is Tariq Milton, who's going to move the change for Iowa State, converting on third down and three. And a gain of six. And that's a great example of using all the attention that comes with Charlie Kohler and with number eight, Xavier Hutchinson, dragging the defense away from the receiver. Quick throw again to Milton to the outside, feeling fully no one for Texas. Chris Adamora on the tackle. I got a flag on the play. Here's our official David Alvarez, the referee. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense 
Number 36, 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic, first down. So Jacoby Jones flagged for a personal foul and an unnecessary roughness. These are the things you can't afford right now to get this offense jump started for Iowa State, who on the other side has been playing conservative. A lot of short area throws, some runs. This is a team that jumped out on Kansas State quick the last time we saw them getting a shot deep downfield, getting Xavier Hutchinson, your wide receiver, involved in the deep middle could really help them out here. They were able to score early and often in that game in a 45-0 shutout. Purdy off the fake, swings it outside, and Johnny Lang on the reception pushed out of bounds. Here's a look in the middle of the field here with 36, Jones, who was flagged here for the personal foul. Tangled up with an offensive lineman, and you see putting himself in dangerous territory, swinging kind of with the open hand there. With all eyes on you and the ref in the middle of the field, you're one referee thinking you threw a punch away from all of a sudden exiting the game. Now second and five for Iowa State. Brees Hall patiently waits. Tackled immediately, another flag down. Offside defense, number 46, lined up in the neutral zone. The yardage will result in a first down. That's the star, Joseph Osai, flagged for offsides and two consecutive plays, a couple of first downs via penalty for Texas. When we talked to Sam Ellinger, he said that this team was trying to play a complete football game on both sides of the ball. Said early in the season, the offense was going. The last few games, the defense has been going. This is an area where your offense has jumped out early. You can't be making these mistakes and gift wrapping Iowa State opportunities. So now in Texas territory, ball spotted at the 35. Purdy going to look to the sideline. Has a man wide open. That is Shaw, who escapes the tackle. Touchdown, Cyclones. What an answer out of Brock Purdy. Sean Shaw and Iowa State is on the board. You're looking down the field here. You didn't see it, but a corner blitz from the outside coming right where Shaw was. Opens up the space. No one replaces from that Texas defense over on that side. And a great run after catch opportunity. Aided by a couple of penalties. Six plays, 75 yards after Texas jumped out to an early 10-0 lead. Caden Stearns missed the tackle. And because of it, Iowa State able to get on the board. Extra point here by Connor Asali. And a good bounce back out of Iowa State. Purdy to Shaw. Lots to be decided in the Big 12. A fun one early, 10-7 Texas. Coverage bust on that touchdown play here. They're gonna bring the corner blitz from the sideline. And then this safety is going to get bought up by the tight end running upfield here. Gonna leave wide open space on the sideline for Shaw on this touchdown. And Brock Purdy does the right thing. Sees pressure coming from that right side, throws exactly where it came from. The bust in the back end leads to a great score to get Iowa State right back into this game. You saw Shaw at the top of the screen waving his hand saying, Brock, find me, find me. And Texas defensively, two penalties, a 15-yarder, first down, five-yarder on second and five, first down, and a missed tackle to get Iowa State back in this one as Nettles deep to kick to Sean Jamison to receive for the Longhorns, and he's gonna take it from his own three and brought down just shy of the 20 by Blake Peterson. Matt, so far today for Texas on offense, the formula's been pretty simple. Let Bijan Robinson go out here and run this outside dome game that only comes with reps. We've mentioned so much the difficulty of coming in with a new coordinator, a new offense in the middle of this season and the diff excuse me, at the beginning of this season, the difficulties with no offseason. Reps running a play like outside zone that you get at live speed, especially with a freshman tailback, so valuable and paying off at this point in the season. And this time we see Roshan Johnson in the backfield for Texas as they start at the 20-yard line up 10-7. Ellinger to fake. Plenty of time. 
has to get out of the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. And a solid gain on first down from Sam Ellinger. That's what this quarterback brings to the table. Play breaks down, freelances feet, gets you a nice gain on first down. So smart he knows we've got deep developing crossing routes. So the defense is going to be pushed back by this. I'm going to have space underneath the work and keep us in favorable down and distance. Is everything on the table here. So a gain of eight, second and two. Ellinger pulls it over the middle, caught. First down, Jordan Whittington. Attack on the play by Lawrence White. Whittington, a five-star freshman. They've been waiting for him to bust a little bit. Plenty of talent for Texas. Here comes the tempo off the right side. It's Johnson again. And Roshan Johnson, big play on first down. Texas able to move the ball, gain of 11, first down long ball. And Tom Herman has a ton of respect for the front three, the defensive linemen for Iowa State. Called them out early in our conversation and said, if you're not talking about these guys, you're crazy. So what's he do? Run away from them. Get on the outside. Give your athletes a chance in space. Ellinger in rhythm, gonna take a shot, and it's incomplete. Intended for Brendan Schooler. Yersich and Herman, they both told us, look, Iowa State doesn't present many opportunities to let you go deep, but when they do, you've gotta take advantage. And that time, Schooler just gets that one loss, gets a little bit turned around in the route. But they've been going downfield often to start this game. I love this of their game plan. Try and brush this Iowa State de defense back that wants to play so aggressive. So a big play to Brennan Eagles on the first drive to set up the field goal. Ellinger again to throw over the middle. It has Tariq Black. And there's no whistle. And they've given the ball to Iowa State. Ashimi Young was on the play, Tariq Black caught it, fumbled it, no whistle. Iowa State's defense was alert to Going that. on the field is a catch for the fumble, recovered by the defense, first down, Iowa State. And you see two steps after the catch right there. Ashim Young does a great job of putting his shoulder right into the football. As we bring in our rules official, Matt Austin now. Matt, what are you seeing on this? Was there enough after the catch here for this to be ruled a fumble? I, I do not think so. Uh, you're right. He got two steps down. I, I would like a third step to show control. He needs to have the ball long enough to become a runner. Uh, he, the first contact he made, the, he the lost the ball. To me, he didn't have enough view. control. He didn't have it long catch, enough. That's an incomplete pass. So, Matt, for the people at home that are sitting on their couch and enjoying this great Friday of college football, uh, perhaps walk us through what constitutes that football move that we're looking for uh, prior to an incomplete or a complete and fumbled pass? Well, first you have to have firm control of the ball. That, that's the key because if there's any bobble at all, then, then you lose it, then it's completely over. But if you do stick it in there, now you've got to have the ball a certain amount of time. Now, a football move can be a lot of things. It can be tucking the ball away. It can be turning up field. It can be taking a third or a fourth step, any of those things. But you have to have the time to do it. He got two steps, he got hit, the ball came out. In my opinion, he didn't have it long enough and that should be incomplete. You don't want any cheap turnovers. Tariq Black transferred in from Michigan, once a much highly touted recruit for Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines, found his way here to Austin. And it was a good throw by Ellinger, found that spot, put it there. Black's gotta hang on to that, make the catch. This is a matchup of two things this team, both these teams do well. You have on one side Texas who wants to let Sam Ellinger work in the middle of the field, trust your smart quarterback to know what he sees and cut it loose in there. But then on the other side, Ishim Young was a freshman All-American watch list guy. Started five games this year, and they do such a good job, Matt, in the middle of this defense, separating man from ball here. From the linebacker group to the safeties in this 3-3-5 structure, they put a lot on their plate. 
when it comes to coming up and making plays by simplifying the scheme and allowing them to play fast downhill and trust what they see like. But that. I'll tell you, you, look, Tom Herman was honest. He's like, guys, I'm, I'm worried about the rust. I think with this, this amount of layoff, we had a bye week to the game against Tech. Uh, Kansas was postponed because of COVID. And so he was worried about rust on both sides of the ball. I haven't seen it yet offensively for the Longhorns, who were hoping After to... further review, going on the field stands, it was a catch and a fumble, first down, Iowa State. Wow. So a turnover for Texas. Matt, why do you think they made that call? Well, the call in the field was a catch and a fumble. So they need to have indisputable evidence, in their opinion, to overturn it. In the opinion of the, uh, the replay official, they didn't have that, so they let the call stand. All right, so Cyclones get the turnover. Brock Purdy and Iowa State looking to take advantage. Your thoughts, Mike? Uh, you know what? I actually liked the original call. I think that's as close to the line as you're going to get on what Matt was talking about here and ultimately creates a great opportunity now. Another mistake from Texas allowing Iowa State to get back in this game. Purdy fake rollout incomplete trying to find his star tight end, Charlie Kohler. In a game of this magnitude for both teams, mistakes, penalties, turnovers, those need to be limited if you're going to have an opportunity to take advantage of big plays and get yourself out of here with a win. That's that 19-day gap really playing out in this versus a team on the other side that the hallmark of this program is, I've always said on offense and defense for Iowa State, it's like they're all connected by a string. Everything works well in unison. They know where they need to be at all times. Both teams coming in on a three-game winning streak. The fake to Hall outside. Quick catch by Sean Shaw, who caught the touchdown for the Cyclones. Forced out of bounds by Josh Thompson. And we're seeing some more of these big tight end bodies trot back onto the field right now. On third down again, probably more 12 and 13 personnel. One back, two and three tight ends on the field than any team you're going to see in college football, certainly in the Big 12, to give them a chance to create mismatches against the linebacker core for Texas that has a few converted safeties in it. So third and four now, Iowa State. Can Texas's defense force him off the field after the turnover? The throw, incomplete, good coverage. That's DeMarvian overshone with the coverage, and Texas forces the punt after the turnover on offense. Watch Zero and Burn Orange here, matched up with Charlie Kohler. They're all American on the other side, does a great job of staying with it, getting a handout in front of that. DeMarvian Overshawn is one of the players that we mentioned, a converted safety dropping down, playing Will Linebacker for them now, has broken up a pass in nine of his last 13 games. Tell you what, you know, Chris Ashton, the defensive coaches love the defense, picking up the offense is Jamison. It's going to receive the punt, take it just shy of midfield. Coming up, big day of college football on ABC, and I love it. Number two, Notre Dame taking on number 19, North Carolina. And at 7.30 Eastern over on ESPN, you've got Oregon taking on Oregon State and Corvallis. Both of these games, of course, on the ESPN app. But if you look at our All-State playoff predictor, what does tonight's game have in store? You got Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit on the call. Looking forward to that. But Notre Dame, chances to reach the playoff. Currently at 57%. A win against UNC jumps those to 69%. And I'll tell you what, Notre Dame, best to be careful going up against North Carolina Sam Howell out there in Chapel Hill. What an offense that is. Ellinger going to take advantage, going deep, and a flag on the play that intended for Joshua Moore. First time we've called his name today. And again, Texas is going for it, Golden. They're going for it, and this is understanding by your veteran quarterback and where he puts this ball. Defense, number 13, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. You see the corners back turned on that play the way you do in your Sam. Throw the ball under, let your receiver come back for it, and know he's either going to get a big play, and Sam liking what he sees there, or that pass interference penalty as the defender puts his head right into the chest of the receiver. Every possession we've seen out of the Longhorns, they've gone deep. They must have seen something on tape that they were going to try to exploit from that Iowa State defense. So it brings up a first and ten. Texas again in Cyclones territory. Ellinger again going to look deep. And that's incomplete. Whittington 
the true freshman, the intended receiver, DJ Miller, on the coverage. And a great job by DJ Miller in the back end of this defense, sorting things out. You had a four by one look, four receivers over to that side, trying to buy up, flood that area of the field, and see if they can get Winnington loose down in the back end. This kid's got all kind of talent, that Winnington. Looking forward to see what he does in his career at Austin. Ellinger, a designed run. Sam Ellinger able to pick up a first down. I'm not sure that's how the play was designed to start, but good vision out of the senior quarterback to find a crease and move the chains. Gain of 12. Those read option plays are tricky every once in a while. That defensive end will cloud the view a little bit. Probably could have handed that off, but as usual, Ellinger finds a way to make a play. Here comes the tempo. And another true freshman, Bijan Robinson, on first down in a gain of two. Mike Rose making the play on the other side is a guy who plays like his hair is on fire every down. 6'4", 245, and Matt Campbell, his head coach, said, find me a player that's playing better in the country right now than he has down this stretch of the season. Said he believes Rose is playing the best football in our sport. Ellinger is going to be tackled in the backfield. Pressure immediately by 55, Zach Peterson, brought down by your guy, Rose. A great job by Peterson. Texas mixing in, and we've seen with the quarterback some of these pin and pull runs where a tight end will block down on the outside. You can pull those guys around into the boundary. Gives the defense a chance to knife up field, set up third and long. Now under a minute in the first quarter. And a timeout by Iowa State. Iowa State called their first time out of the half. 30 seconds in length. It's the first timeout of the game this season. For every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will contribute to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Third and 10 here now for the Longhorns, Matt. And depending on what they see in the other side, could be a great spot to start to get a look at some of the crossing routes here that are such a big part of Mike Yurcich's offense. Spent last year with Ohio State and it brought a lot of those Ryan Day concepts with him in the middle of the field that'll give you great free runners if you get man-to-man -man on the other side or give your receivers an opportunity to sit in those zones and make a play for you there, creating some confusion in the middle where Sam loves to cut it loose. Man, I loved talking to your sits and Sam Ellinger and the relationship that those two have between quarterback and coach and the trust and how paramount that is for a play caller and his senior quarterback to get on the same page. Now third and 10, ball at the 29. Ellinger to the outside incomplete intended for Jake Smith Lawrence White on the coverage Timing just seemed a little bit off there There was an opening for a second with Smith and Ellinger's just got to cut that loose before he sees the receivers eyes in that position there Great job by Mike Yurcich the offensive coordinator using that running back motion to get him some information Knew he had zone coverage before the snap just couldn't take advantage, and now they get to try for three. So Cameron Dicker on for a field goal attempt. 47-yarder. Flag before the kick. Dicker off the upright, and no good, but let's check the flag. Illegal formation, defense, number 56, lined up within the frame of the center, five yard penalty, replay, fourth down. Another mental error popping up on the defensive side of the football, this time for Iowa State. That long snapper is protected now in college football. You can't line up in the framework and certainly can't contact there. That's a player we talk about defenseless all the time. Head down before and during the snap, they're trying to make sure they take any hits off that player. Easier kick here for Dicker. Yeah, add to it. Dicker got a free pass at it. Went off the upright. Be surprised if he even flirted with the right side of that again. Now a 42-yard field goal attempt. Kick is on the way. Cameron Dicker splits the uprights and gives Texas a six-point cushion, 13-7. to seven. As Cameron Dicker gets a make good on the Iowa State penalty. 
and Texas' third consecutive possession, they score some points. They do, and Matt, you brought it up. It's because they're willing to Iowa challenge State's Iowa State number downfield. Number 21 is now wearing number 81. Challenge them downfield. Sam Ellinger, we saw him taking off, running when he's got deep crossers working, knowing the defense is going to be back. And so for Iowa State on the other side now, the challenge is, all right, we see what they're looking for here. This is a defense that's built to stop big plays in the Big 12. They came into this conference and said, we've got to do something against all these high-powered quarterbacks and receivers. And so John Heacock in this defensive outfit for Iowa State know that's the hallmark of their defense. Can the front seven that got so much respect from Tom Herman start to show up a little bit more and affect Sam Ellinger? You just got the sense when we spent some time with Ellinger that he understood the importance of not sleepwalking through this first quarter coming off the big layoff, couldn't afford to let the rust dig yourselves a hole. And it's been anything but that for the Texas offense, who scored points every time down. That kick going to go into the end zone for a touchback. And Iowa State, if they're going to get this thing going offensively consistently, Brees Hall, two rushes, one yards. Great job on the Texas offense. Defense, rather. And this is an offense for Iowa State with offensive coordinator Tom Manning that does a great job using all the shifts and motions that we talked about to scheme opportunities for Brees Hall to be one-on-one -on -one in the box with a defensive back. And those instances, nine out of 10 times, he's making a player miss for at least a few extra yards. But we've seen plenty of times this season when you're leading the NCAA in rushing, there's a lot of big running plays that come because he's able to account for that unblocked hat. During Texas's three-game winning streak, Longhorns defense only giving up 79 yards rushing a game. We mentioned Hall. Here he is, first down. And a gain of six. And Matt, an easy way to get this running game started if you're Brees Hall is to follow Dylan Sainer. 6'7", 272 pounds, tight end, H-back, lead blocker extraordinaire. And Iowa State's going to let the clock go to zeros, but and what a great first quarter. first quarter we've had. Big 12 championship looms for both programs. Texas struck Iowa State back. 13-7, first quarter here on ABC. College football on ABC presented by PlayStation 5. Start of the second quarter. Texas up 13-7. Time now for today's half black trivia question. Who are the two running backs since 1997 with 100 plus rushing yards and one plus rushing touchdown in each of the season's first eight games? I am my father's son, which means I'm terrible at trivia, but this feels like Rashad Penny territory. There are two of them, and a quick play and hit to Milton. Forced out of bounds, and a first down for Iowa State. The Marvian overshone defensively. So again, there are two of them, Michael McChee. If you don't know one of them, it feels like Reggie Bush territory. Is that's I, I, he's such an all-purpose guy. He's my go-to answer for most things running back. Like, but I don't want to overthink. It. Like how bad is your dad at trivia? Oh god, awful. Okay. Purdy over the middle, receiver wide open, and that Saner that we had talked about the tight end room. Dylan Saner, big play for the Cyclones. This is the difficulty that he creates because you're always so worried about him as a blocker. And you see him going out that time. Chris Adamora sees him coming up and thinks he's getting blocked and would run right past him for a so great catch. 20 yard gain into Texas territory. It's Brees Hall off the left side. What a cut by Brees Hall. Big gain for the Cyclone star and a flag on the play. Just an unbelievable job on the cutback here. Draws the defense up into the box, and this is what he does so well. Puts his foot to the ground and finds the edge after the defense rallies. During the run, holding offense, number 64. 10-yard penalty from the spot on the foul. Replay, first down. So the play won't stand at a Brees Hall. 
I will tell you, there are two running backs for the athletic trivia question. If you did all the prep for the game, we would know that one of them is in the game. Yes. Okay, so you knew that one. Knew that one. Okay, so the second one played his college ball in the great state of Texas. This feels like a trap. It's not. Kanae Wangu now in the backfield for the Cyclones. Purdy the fake, forced to roll right, comes back to the left, thought about throwing across his body, and Purdy, what a great individual effort to move the chains for the Cyclones. And now the answer for today's Aflac trivia question, Brees Hall the first. Aflac. And Ladanian Tomlinson, TCU. Decent football player. He Things knew what he was doing. Right Old Dennis right. Franchoni out there with the Horned Frogs. Now Gary Patterson, one of the great coaches in college football. It was as obvious as you made it out to be. Thank and you, And I Mike. feel every bit of the shame I should. I bet, though, if I gave you, like, 90s trivia, you would nail it. Music, movies, and a play on the outside for Iowa State. Nothing doing there. Uwangu, the carrier tackled by Stearns and Atamora. You're starting to see a lot more of the rhythm from Iowa State on offense now. And we talk so much about Sam Ellinger. Brock Purdy able to make great plays when the uh, when the original play breaks down. You saw it throwing the pump fake in the open field there to try and brush the defenders back and, and leaning into what we saw before. Tight ends on linebackers in this game is going to be the matchup that defines it all day. And it's going to give Brees Hall these opportunities to hit big runs. It is Brees Hall off the left side. Nice block, big hit, Jalen Green. Uh, Brees Hall able to get nine in the first down, but he paid for it with Green just lowering his shoulder. He did. Listen to the hit at the end here. That is a form tackle. Maybe keep your head up a little more, see what you hit. Obviously thinking about the safety of the defender, but those are the second level collisions that always made me happy I operated within about a foot of the guy <laughs> I was going to hit at the line of scrimmage. If Tom Amansky did football videos back to back to back AAU champs, that tackle would be on it. First and 10, Purdy designed run. Nothing doing, Texas defense there. Osai leading the way. Osai doing a great job retracing inside. It's the one place you can't get beat if you're an offensive lineman on that play, but Osai has such a great threat of speed up the field for this offensive line to worry about. Able to get what he wants coming back under. Osai along with Taquan Graham, both of them playing really, really good football now for Chris Ash, the first year defensive coordinator. Said they had to make some adjustments after the first three games, but he really feels that this unit is grasping what it is he's trying to do. Now second and 11, New Wangu. Up the middle, gain of three. You know, Sai is one of these players, the defensive side of the ball of Sam Ellinger, the leader, puts everything on his shoulder. In fact, Osai called Ellinger after the Oklahoma game and said, I'm sorry. And Ellinger's like, for what? Because I've got to make more plays. And then you saw the overtime sack against Oklahoma State, but he's really put it on himself to be the leader to get this Texas program back to the Big 12 championship. The relationship those guys have defines this team. Sam Ellinger said that was his favorite play of this season, watching his teammate and the leader on this team go out and make good on a promise. So third and nine, ball inside the 20. Purdy forced out of the pocket. And he's gonna keep it himself, try to get to the first down marker. And what an effort by Purdy. We'll see where the ball's spotted. And it looks just short, forced out by Jawan Mitchell, but a gain of seven from Purdy. And they're getting up here quick because they know they want to get up and go for this. A yard, a yard with the group that you've got up front. This offensive line for Iowa State, one of the Joe Moore Award midseason honorees, an award that annually goes to the best offensive line unit in college football. Coach saying, put it on them, put it on Brees Hall, the nation's leading rusher, to get that yard for you. So this is statement decision by Matt Campbell in Iowa State. Fourth and one. 
The toss to Hall. Easy work, Brees Hall. First down, Iowa State. Ball spotted at the five. Great job running into the boundary, getting a puller out in front of Brees. Big bodies on the move in space with a running back as patient as Brees Hall is. For all the burst that we see, it's his patience behind the line of scrimmage to set up the blocks for his big fellows up front that makes this work so well, that makes him one of the best backs in college football. Darrell Simmons, the key block there to spring Hall. Every coaching staff on both sides of the ball, Texas and Iowa State, said the scheme fits Brees Hall and his running style perfect. Now first and goal, it's Brees again up the middle. He's gonna brought, be brought down short, marked at the two. Caden Stearns on the tackle. I mean, we're just watching this tight end room get together on that bunch and cave in an entire side of the Texas defense there. They make no bones about where the ball is going for all the sleight of hand that can at times be a part of this offense. Very obvious when they get down in the red zone. Iowa State down 10-0 early, was able to get on the board in the first. Trying to regain the lead here in the second movement. Everyone points, blames each other, looks as if this will go against Iowa State. A tradition unlike any other. No, it's their fault. False start. Offense, number 55, five-yard penalty, still second down. You guys do love to point at each other, don't you? Offensive linemen, defensive linemen. The offensive line is not a room that likes attention, Matt. And so after that flinch, it's the loneliest field in the world, feeling in the world. Shout out to his teammates for trying to deflect some of the blame. But in a critical spot as you're knocking on the door down in the goal line. Purdy to fake, forced out, steps up, has clearance to the left, and that's closed quickly. Good closing speed and a tackle by Chris Adamora. And that's why having the ability to hold your water in those spots up on that offensive line pays such big dividends. Now you're sitting at third and goal back from the eight or nine. Completely different section of the playbook. Got to lean more. Make use of Brock Purdy's mobility on this play. Give him an opportunity to be able to roll right in the pocket here and let those big bodies clog up space in the middle of the field right now. The advantage of being able to split these tight ends out in the middle of a bunch like you're seeing on the bottom of the formation. We saw Jacoby Jones limping off the field. Third and goal, play clock down to one. Purdy able to get the snap off, goes to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Intended for Chase Allen, and a great job by the Texas defense, covered by Thompson, to force a field goal after Iowa State converted earlier on a fourth and one. And this is a great job. You see the pressure coming up front. Purdy's got to get the ball out of his hands early. And then Josh Thompson does a great job of being just physical enough at the top to disrupt the timing with Chase Allen, the tight end. And now they have to kick. So Connor Asali on for the field goal attempt. A 26 yarder. And Asali kicks it through. We've got a good back and forth game, 13-10 Texas, midway through the second here on ABC. Midway through the second quarter, big game in the Big 12. Matt Berry, Mike Golick Jr., Chris Budden on the call. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must have for Big 12 fans. Tuesday, 1 Eastern, noon Central. Matt Campbell, you'll get the press conference of the Cyclones head football coach, plus the basketball team is going to take on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Sunday, 12.05 Eastern, 11.05 Central. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. So Drake Nettle is going to kick it off for the Cyclones. Deshaun Jamison deep to receive for Texas. In what has been a very entertaining quarter and a half of football. And that kick Gonna go out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. First down, 34 yard, 35 yard line. Timeout. So the ball for Sam Ellinger at the 35 yard line. A mistake Matt Campbell did not want to see out of his kicker. We'll come back after this.
College Football, presented by PlayStation 5 on ABC, is brought to you by Here Pacific on. Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. And Mazda's season of inspiration. Feel alive. What a great moment this morning. Texas unveiling a statue honoring San Antonio native Julius Whittier, who was Texas's first black football letterman. Three varsity letters as an O-lineman and a part of the 1970 National Championship team and a Texas Athletics Hall of Honor member. Also got his law degree from Texas, was a prosecutor at the Dallas District Attorney's Office until 2012. Remarkable legacy being honored there. Texas first and 10 from the 35. Robinson trying to get off the right side, and it's Mike Rose who was there to meet him in a loss of one. And you see this Iowa State defense starting to play a little more downhill now as Texas has been going over the top on them all day. I'm sure they figure the best opportunity to do that, cut off the head of the snake, try and get and disrupt Sam Ellinger's timing. So Robinson now out of the backfield, empty backfield for Ellinger, second and 11. Time for Ellinger, over the middle, caught. Joshua Moore is gonna try to fight for first down yardage, and it looks as if the spot could be enough to get it to him. Let's check into the studio now with Kevin Agandi. Kevin, good stuff. Thank you. Hugh Freeze, what a story he's been this year. Malik Willis and Liberty. Losing last week to NC State. First down, Texas. And that rose Sean Johnson on the carry for a gain of four. Without Keontae Ingram today, great running back for them. Five career 100-yard games, and having to replace that productivity over the course of the season has created the opportunity for B. John Robinson, the freshman, to step up and Roshan Johnson to get meaningful carries in this offense. And a pretty balanced attack to this point for Texas. 132 yards through the air, 92 on the ground. Ellinger, fake, rolls left, caught by Whittington. Looked as if it was a broken miscommunication play out of Ellinger. Let's go down to Chris Budden for more on this senior class. Yeah, we talk about how important this Big 12 championship game would mean to them to get there to win it. Ellinger's part of that 2017 Herman's first signing class. Only 10 guys left from that group. One of them left tackle Sam Cosby. He told me at the beginning of the year, it's the sole reason they wanted to play this season, so that this class could go out with a Big 12 title. Tom Herman talks affectionately about this class, says we don't make the strides we're making as a program without Ellinger and these fellow seniors. Third and six, pressure, and he's brought down Ellinger's sack by number 56, Latrell Bankston, in a big play for the Cyclones offense, who are gonna get the ball with two timeouts remaining. This is a move the pocket protection. You're seeing the O-line sprint out to the left, but overshooting it when the quarterback steps up, that launch point on the back of the offensive line. It's what you've always got to be aware of in this situation. That time it looked like the O-line and the quarterback on a different page when it comes to where they thought he was going to be. So Iowa State's defense able to force a punt. Tariq Milton deep to receive. And Dicker doing double duty. No flags on the pressure on Dicker Milton. The safe fair catch. So Brock Purdy and the Cyclones. Down three, 347 left. Two timeouts when we come back.
left in the first half. Brock Purdy, Cyclones down three. Two timeouts. And what many in Ames in that area of the country are without hyperbole calling one of the biggest games in Iowa State history. And it's going to be Brees Hall off the left side. Tried to be patient. Nothing ever developed. Tackled on the play by Jet Bush. We talk about what's at stake for the Cyclones. They win today. They're all but in the Big 12 championship game. And they haven't played for a conference championship, but won a conference championship since 1912. Uncharted territory for them. They've played the spoiler since Matt Campbell's been here in the Big 12. Already tied their own school record for conference wins this season with six. And trying to make that push to the next level in this conference. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 72. Five yard penalty, still second down. Not a good start to this drive, a no gain on first down, and a false start on second. Jake Remsburg. And Matt, I'm shocked so far. We knew Brees Hall is going to be the focal point of this offense, but Xavier Hutchinson has been such a calming presence, a veteran presence in this receiver room. I don't even know if we've seen a target for him so far in this game, number eight in white. Six catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown last week against Kansas State. Purdy again, forced out of the pocket, but able to stay on his feet. And a great job by Brock Purdy, finding his tight end, Dylan Saner. And a gain of 14. Just a four-man rush by Texas here. Nothing open downfield, good, and good, initial, good initial pressure. But Purdy, we mentioned, much like Ellinger, able to keep these plays alive, able to stay downfield. And then what better option for a quarterback than having the kind of targets he does? Again, all 6'7", 272 pounds of Dylan Saner in the middle of the field for you. So third and one. Hall up the middle, he's gonna get the first down for Iowa State, who again, still has two timeouts left. Clock will stop for the change to set. And you've got plenty of time to operate now, but what better time, what better opportunity to start trying to look downfield, to start trying to exploit some of these matchups that you created by demanding respect from Texas within the box for Brees Hall in this rushing attack. Purdy, gonna go deep, has a receiver, and it is overthrown. Intended for Tariq Milton, who had Chris Brown beat. And that is a missed opportunity for the Cyclones, the Iowa State offense. A great job on the route by Tariq Milton, an outside receiver who'd moved into the slot for this season. You get him matched up against the safety, and those are the throws that Brock Purdy's gotta start hitting if they're gonna be able to get on top in this game. Quick throw to Milton, trying to make a man miss, and he does so. Good individual effort by Tariq Milton. Gets out of bounds, clock still moving. Osai able to force him out. I'm surprised we're not seeing a bit more urgency from Iowa State on offense. I think they're really trying to make sure and do what they can to make this the last possession in the half, although Texas all three timeouts, those could start to become a factor, although third and one here makes this a uh, difficult situation for that. And Texas does use one of those timeouts. Two remaining for the Longhorns, and a big third and one. Just a minute over left in the first half. LSU taking on Kellen Mond's Texas A&M, who came in ranked fifth in the first college football playoff rankings, ESPN and the ESPN app. But first things first, Mike Golick Jr., big third and one for Iowa State. 
And don't overthink it. Brees Hall's in the backfield. He's got a great chance for a cutback into the boundary here. Let him get the first down for you and then get up and get a sense of urgency. And it is going to be Brees Hall who's got to bounce it outside. And Texas tried to close, but Hall able to fall forward. First down, Iowa State still with two timeouts. Two timeouts, and now you're seeing them up at the line, ready to go here as the chains reset. Took a while, but they've snapped into two-minute mode. Purdy, quick snap, looks over the middle, and it is caught by Shaw, who's had a nice first half, and another first down for Iowa State, tackled by Jamison. You've got the two timeouts in the middle of the field, still plenty in play in this situation. Purdy, tempo to his tight end, Saner. Forced out of bounds by Brown. Saner comes up. A little banged up after that play. Huge part of their running game as a lead blocker, as a guy that will come back across the line of scrimmage and close the edge. And as we just saw there, can create mismatches for you. This tight end group, the heartbeat of this team offensively. Purdy the fake, get to go deep into coverage. And it is incomplete. Two Cyclones receivers there, Skates and Milton. Yeah, Matt, just uh, route running 101 here, having two guys making it a, almost a Hail Mary jump ball type situation, advantage defense in that spot. Mucking it up with your own guys. So the 10th play of this drive, another third and short. Probably going to bring Brees Hall back in, get a look at this defense. And it's Purdy on the keeper. He'll have the first down after the fake to Hall keeps it himself. And another first down, Iowa State. And Iowa State's going to use their first, or their second timeout, rather. Iowa State. Called their second time out of the half. 30 seconds in length. Coming up at the half, Capital One halftime. Kevin Agandi, Booger McFarland, and Mark Sanchez. Plenty to discuss in a busy college football Friday, including Notre Dame, North Carolina. And look, we've seen North Carolina flirt with an upset of a top ranked team last year in Clemson. That's going to be a fun one to watch. What a perfect scenario for you. Noon kickoff, call a game. You'll be in Notre Dame boxers in your couch by kick. It's an exciting one for a lot of reasons. It's a great challenge for this Notre Dame team. North Carolina getting some defensive personnel back that could help them out after the shootout against Wake Forest. And then for Notre Dame, you're down a couple of your starting offensive linemen. Jarrett Patterson out for the rest of the season, your center. Tommy Kramer missing this game, having his appendix removed. And so can that group step up? It's been a strength for Notre Dame all year and give Ian Book the time he needs. Good for the Cyclones, seeing Saner back on the field. So Iowa State, one timeout. Ball spotted at the 39. Purdy, quick throw, finds Saner. Correction, Charlie Kohler on the catch. And a first down again for Iowa State. Your preseason All-American showing you why there. Missed the first game of the season in the upset against Louisiana. He's such a valuable piece and a guy that Brock Purdy has so much comfort and familiarity with. So an impressive drive towards the end of the half for the Cyclones. Saner in motion. Purdy plenty of time to the sidelines. Caught out of bounds by Kohler. Second down. It's such a unique part about this offense, Matt, because we're watching the middle of a two-minute drill, and we've got three six-five, six-six-plus tight ends on the field for Iowa State, and they're all spread out here. It gives you these opportunities. You see, Brock Purdy's just chucking it up, back shoulder balls giving them an opportunity to go up and be bigger and better than the defenders there. But my still eyes are still 
Number eight in the bottom of the field here. It's been a while since we've heard from Xavier Hutchinson who can make some big jump ball plays for you. So 15 seconds left in the half. Whistles blow. And it's going to be a timeout. Texas, their second. Texas called their second timeout of a half. 30 seconds in length. Pretty balanced day so far out of Brock Purdy. 146 yards through the air and a touchdown. Five carries, 19 yards. Kind of just dealing with the game asks of him so far. So far, so good. We saw him read the blitz on the first touchdown. He's been able to extend plays too. When the pocket breaks down, Brock Purdy has been able to get yards with his legs, keep his eyes downfield, and create for this offense. We know Brees Hall is the headliner, but Brock Purdy came into the season highly rated, talked about well by Todd McShay and our draft analyst for what he could bring going forward. And we've seen a fair amount of that on display so far through one half. Matt Campbell said perhaps because of the preseason expectations that maybe Brock put a little too much on his shoulders early on and wasn't having fun playing football. And then when he had the three interceptions early on in Baylor, Campbell just went up to him, just kind of looked at him. And when he saw Brock Purdy smile and laugh, he's like, all right. He said, I don't think you can throw four. <laughs> and the both of them kind of shared that laugh. And from then on, it has been Brock's best football. So ball at the Texas 23, second and 10. Fake to Hall, deep throw from Purdy. And some contact, no flag. And there was Hutchinson the first time we've called Xavier Hutchinson's name, he was on the target. And Jalen Green was ready for him every step of the way. Ran the route right there with him and then gets his head back around and is making play for the ball. You see Hutchinson coming over the top there, almost having to turn into a defender because Jalen Green had him boxed out so well. Third down here, we've seen them go so much with their tight ends. You're going to get them into the boundary. And I'd imagine Charlie Kohler's the guy I'm looking at. 88 and white. And Iowa State's going to use their third and final timeout. Iowa State called the third and final timeout of the half. 60 seconds in length. Yeah, what is the play call here going to? Well, I think we've seen a lot on this drive, getting these tight ends flexed out, and then just trying to run these switch routes on the outside. See if you can get a little bit of incidental contact, if the defense gives you some man-to-man, -man, and at the very least, create some separation in space for these big targets, and let Brock Purdy just throw up a jump ball for them. It can be their best play at times. Already well in a Sally's field goal range. So you don't want to take yourself out of points either. No, and, and I think that's why. This is a shot at the end zone. It stays near the sideline. So you're either going out of bounds with plenty of time, but you make sure the ball comes out on time if you're Brock Purdy. Goes towards the end zone, goes towards the sideline, and then make sure you live to kick this with a chance to tie it up going into the half. As it stands right now, no yardage gained on this third down it would make it a 40-yard attempt for a Sally. But really a back and forth first half, completely even statistically when you look at total yards, Texas with 218, Iowa State with 210, second consecutive drive now for the Cyclones of at least 13 plays. Everybody kind of found their rhythm after a quick start by Texas. I'd love to see Texas continue their third down trend and go downhill, send an extra rusher and try and rush that clock for Brock Purdy here on a third and distance. Cannot take a sack. Purdy, quick release, has a man, and it's Hutchison again, and it falls incomplete. And a nice job out of the Texas secondary to prevent the touchdown just before the half. And we saw they brought a safety blitz on that play. They rushed six at Brock Purdy. They made him get the ball out, but then on the back end, they had all eyes on Hutchinson in that spot. They knew down in this area of the field who they wanted to find. Hutchinson wanted a flag, didn't get it. A timeout on the field now for injury, and it's going to be a Sally. He's going to try to tie this game with four seconds left. It's Jalen Green, the injured long horn. Jalen Green, who we highlighted on the coverage earlier against Xavier Hutchinson. This Texas secondary has stepped up big time today. Let's see if we can... And 
you see that right leg maybe getting rolled up a bit by his teammate and Xavier Hutchinson in that spot as he's walking off now gingerly. Junior out of Houston, Texas, you had mentioned the secondary acquitted themselves quite well against this Iowa State offense in the first half. This three game winning streak, Texas only given up 21 points per game. Connor Asali here, going to try to tie it as we head to the half. Knows a thing or two about big kicks in games against Texas. He sure does. Got the one last year in Ames. As Iowa State was able to get that victory off the hash. 41-yard attempt. You've got the timeout, you may as well use it. You mentioned to Sally in big kicks against Texas. 60 seconds in length. Now, by no means is this a game winner. It's a little opportunity to tie it up at the half. Ask for it, you shall receive. Last year, Texas was down, came all the way back. Love those all-black uniforms. Brock Purdy and Iowa State forced to come back late. And there's the Asali game winner, 23-21 the final. The boys moving. It's a walk-off. Unbelievable scene for this Iowa State team. And moments like that for Matt Campbell and this program are the ones that you continue to build upon year after year. So when you get into big situations, when it is tight down the stretch, they have a wealth of experience to be able to draw from. That just one of them. Experience and belief. So a salad. 41 yard attempt. Snap clean, kick up. And it's no good. As Sally misses the field goal to the right. And Texas takes a 13 to 10 lead into the half in what is a big game for the Big 12 and the right to play for a Big 12 championship. Halftime report with Kevin Agandhi, Booker McFarland, and Mark Sanchez coming up after these minutes. and a big one for Big 12 championship implications. Texas up 13-10 on Iowa State. That Barry Michael, the junior Chris Button on the call. Time now to take a look at your hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Sam Ellinger, senior day, a lot of emotions to manage. And what has he done but gone out and been his usual self here? Taking advantage of the middle of the field with these big body wide receivers being able to get out in space in the design of the play, the intelligence to operate this offense, the ability to make things happen when it breaks down, and the toughness to finish runs like this in the goal line. It's what we mentioned off the top. It's what made Sam such a great in this Longhorn uniform, and it's been on full display in the first half. Yeah, it has been Sam Ellinger, everything we've expected to see out of him. Senior day and a big moment for him in his career. Four-year starter, no four-year starters ever left Texas without winning a Big 12 championship. That's certainly still in play for the Longhorns' star quarterback. So Iowa State won the toss to begin the game. They deferred to the second half, so they will get the ball first. Com coming off the Connor Asali missed field goal just before the half. Luongo and Brock deep to receive for Iowa State. First half, a lot of what we expected once they settled down a little bit. It was good football. Looking forward to a good second half here. This Dicker's kick goes out of the end zone. Touchback at the 25. Let's take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary. It's been a lot of Sam Ellinger leading this offense. They've done a good job as the Texas defense 
quieting Brees Hall, who came into the game having run for over 100 yards in each of the first eight games, only 37 in the first half. So Texas' defense doing a good job running the They are doing a good job, and I think Iowa State, quite frankly, needs to do some of what Texas did to start this game. Sam Ellinger going downfield early created a lot of great rushing opportunities for Bijan on the Texas side. Now for Iowa State, can they go deep early and start to give Brees Hall some better box looks up front? So it is going to be Brees Hall to start the second half. Let's go down to the third member of our team in Chris Paul. Yeah, Matt Campbell, more of a motivational speech at halftime. Do better, be better. He said his biggest issue is in not finishing. He is pleased with the time and possession, having the ball for over 11 minutes in that second quarter, but says it's in the details. It's taking the three points off the board at the end because of the missed field goal on offense and defense. It's the small things in the details that we have to be better at. One of them, Jalen Green, defensive back for Texas, questionable with an ankle injury. All right, Chris, thank you. Second and five after a five-yard carry for Brees Hall. And you can really point to both teams in the red zone not able to finish drives. Purdy steps up, has a good opportunity. Good block on the outside. And he's met immediately for the tackle. And a big hit. That's Josh Thompson on the hit. Iowa State's been productive so far, four of nine on third down in the first half. And these downs and distances right here where you have to respect Brees Hall in that backfield, give them the opportunities to continue going for looks to Charlie Kohler, their All-American tight end, lined up in the slot here. That's been the steady formula for them, using him as a big piece on these downs. Third and manageable has been a staple for Iowa State with the big tight ends. Purdy out of the shotgun, Milton in motion. Quick throw to Milton to the outside, and that's going to be a first down Iowa State. This is an offense again. The way they want to move around, the way Tom Manning calls the shifts motion, the defense really, especially born in Texas, who doesn't pressure often, has to sit back and be patient in a lot of these. Another quick throw, that low to Milton. He's able to scoop it up. DeMarvian overshone. Knocking Milton out of bounds. I'll be interested second half, Mike Golick Jr., to see if they can't get Hutchinson involved. Their big play receiver, been a lot of Milton, been a lot of Shaw, but not a lot of Xavier Hutchinson at all. No, and, and this coaching staff, Matt Campbell, really sang his praises. He was a guy they got from Blinn, a JUCO transfer, the sixth rated JUCO wide receiver coming in and said he brought a maturity to this young wide receiver room that's really helped permeate in this locker room. Kanenu Wangu now in the backfield for the Cyclones. He's going to get the ball here on second and six. Makes a couple of men miss and able to barrel his way forward. Brought down by Jamison. Gain of five. Kanenu Wangu's got a lot of these video game glitch runs where you see him run into a situation. It's almost like he's running straight through bodies here. Follows his tight end and has the power and speed to squeeze up and get tough yards. All right, so what do we talk about again? Third and short. Just shy of midfield. Opening possession of the second half for Iowa State. Nwangu met immediately and tackled by the Texas defense. It is overshown and a great effort by the Longhorns to get in the backfield in a loss of three. It's all Osai. Joseph Osai, a playmaker they're used to living behind the line of scrimmage. Came into this game with 13 and a half tackles for loss and just knifes inside the offensive tackle and has the athleticism to bend and get back upfield. So defensively, Texas to stop, Rivera to punt. And a fair catch at the 11 yard line. What a great start for the Longhorns. Then Sam Ellinger in the offense adds something. 13 10 Texas, start of the third. on ESPN. We are in Austin for the Big 12 showdown between Texas and Iowa State. Here's what's at stake for both of these teams. This according to our Football Power Index, the odds to reach the Big 12 championship game. With a win today for Texas, 78% chance. With the win for Iowa State, 99% chance. 
you know, with all due respect to the Football Power Index, as we see the true freshman, Bijan Robinson on the carry, not really a numbers guy. I'm a, I'm a play and win guy. I'll put it to you as simple as I can without numbers. Iowa State wins, they're in a great spot. Texas has to win out, then they're in the Big 12 championship. That's the kind of analysis that you, Jesse, Joey, dealing out on the reg Look, here on the weekends. Did I just say on the reg? We're not big calculator people. Ellinger, quick toss to the sideline. That Eagles, who had a couple of big plays to start this game, and we saw Texas stretch the field towards the end of the second, or first half, rather. They slowed it down a little bit. We're just getting five, six-yard plays. Yeah, and now you're in third and manageable, third and medium here, and so Eagles gonna be in play again. I think Sam's gotta continue to look downfield at big targets like Eagles, take advantage in the middle. These three-by-one sets, they love to get crossing action over the middle of the field, see if they can get bodies loose and get some accidental contact on these defenders. Third and five for Ellinger. Quick throw to the outside. That Jake Smith. And Smith able to stay up and stay in bounds. Jake Smith. He didn't slow up towards the end. He heard the whistles catch up to him, and he did step out of bounds. Great job perimeter blocking. And then you see right here, just enough push. Ooh! Ooh. Let's see if it's... And right there. Boy, Matt, getting a second look at this. I'm not seeing it in the initial spot here where there's some contact near and around. That toes inside. But Matt Austin, correct us if I'm wrong. Our booth official of whistle blows plays dead. Exactly, and it's not reviewable. So nonetheless, a big play for Texas off the left side. And a first down, that Roshan Johnson now in. So here comes Texas with the tempo. You heard Tom Herman tell our Chris Budden at the half, we're gonna have to be okay with four or five yards of time. And that six on first down. And it's Johnson again off the tackle, and there's that recipe. Five-yard gain, move the chains, first down, Texas. But this is exactly what we saw to start the game for them, Matt. We mentioned offensive coordinator Mike Yursich comes in here in year one, and they want to be a bit more of an outside run team than they've been in the past. Get these athletes moving in space. That's the advantage you're always going to have right here. We saw it work for them early in the first quarter. Go back to it here, put your foot on the gas. Ball at the 44-yard line, first and 10 for Ellinger. Going to take a shot deep, has a receiver. What a catch. Brennan Eagles, big play, Texas. It's just my better's better than your better again. He's going to run right by him at the top of the screen here. Defensive back's in position, but he puts it up there. Great job tracking the ball. Sam Ellinger and Brennan Eagles started off this game with big plays down the field. The first, we remember though, the opening drive, Texas not able to capitalize and put it in when they get down to the red zone. That's got to change and start now in this half. Get Sam involved in the run game down here. Four receptions, 127 yards for Eagles. The go-to guy for Ellinger, designed run for the quarterback, lowers his shoulder and a nice gain on first down. We know Tom Herman lauded the defensive line for Iowa State, but this linebacker group led by Mike Rose, number 23, to me is the strength when they're playing fast and downhill. So getting that extra blocker with your running backs and having a quarterback who's as capable and understands setting up his blockers like Sam gives you such an advantage here. First possession of the game for Texas got down to the red zone. We didn't see any designed runs for Ellinger, perhaps a little bit surprised. Settled for a field goal, now second and six. Ellinger to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Texas. Jared Wiley catches it from Ellinger. And the Longhorns on their first possession of the second half go eight plays, 89 yards, and looking to extend their lead to 20 to 10. We've lauded the big targets for Iowa State in their tight end room. Texas not short on big bodies there as well. Jared Wiley, 6'7", 
250, and that time gets a great matchup against the safety, and that's the spot where you need these guys to win. That's where the staff challenged this group to win. And that's exactly, your six told us about that kid. He said, we can get Jared Wiley to step up. We like our tight end room as well as Cameron Dicker tacks on the extra point. Now 20 to 10, Texas. Same as it ever was to start the game for Texas. Brennan Eagles, big play, sets up Ellinger and the Longhorns, and it is big Jared Wiley right now. Texas up 2010, midway through the third quarter. Presented by PlayStation 5 on ABC is brought to you by General Mills. This football season, no matter where you are or how you pregame, we are all Tailgate Nation. Find game day recipes and savings at wearetailgatenation.com. And Chex Mix, it takes a mix. There haven't been many better to wear the burnt orange than one Ricky Williams. Let's go down to Chris Budden, the third member of our team. Ricky taking some time away from his Longhorn Network duties. We showed the video of you breaking the record for the NCAA all-time rushing record. What do you remember about that day? I remember it was a day much like this. It was an early morning game. It was kind of chilly. It was it was rainy, and uh, and I, I pretty much knew I was going to get the ball a bunch. I knew it was important for me, but really important for the program for me to break that record. I remember that first quarter, almost every single play, major turnaround and giving me the ball. When you watch it back now, or you watch old film of yourself, what comes to mind? You know, just will. You know, I remember on that play, I was looking. I looked up at the scoreboard and I saw that there was 11 yards uh, I needed to break the record. And I, I told myself, I'm going to do it on this play. And when the DB came, I just put my shoulder down and ran right through him. And I got in the open field. And my receiver came and gave me a nice block. And I made it all the way, barely, into the end zone. Looking at this year's team, you've dubbed someone Little Rocky. Ricky, sorry, Bijan Robinson. What have you seen out of his play in his freshman year so far? Well, for early in the season when he really wasn't touching the ball a whole bunch, he saw flashes. But as he's gotten a chance to, to take over the starting role, we see brilliance. And the things he's doing out on the field as a freshman, I can't wait to see this for another hopefully three more years. You mentioned Will. That's something you see so much out of Sam Ellinger. For a guy that's been around this team, what do you see out of this class, this senior class, and what they hope to do this year? Well, I think they really put getting Texas back on the map on their shoulders. And I think a win here and, and going to the Big 12 Championship can really seal the deal for him. But Texas football is fun to watch again, and I think these seniors have a lot to do with that. I appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Ricky. Thank you. Chris, great stuff. Thank you. This is the 22-year anniversary to the day that Ricky broke that record. Good seeing the legend and being a part of our Longhorn Network coverage as Brees Hall takes it off the left side and a first down for Iowa State. And right on cue, talking about one great running back, an all-time great, to one who leads the NCAA in rushing in Brees Hall. And Brees has been at his best today, getting on the perimeter like we just saw there. Iowa State's got to get creative up front now. Texas's front four on the other side, really starting to impose their will, make life hard on that offensive line. Brees Hall just got his 50th yard on the day. Purdy to throw, first and 10. Left side wide open is the big tight end. Charlie Kohler in a big play for the Cyclones as they're now back in Texas territory. And right on cue, that offensive line providing great protection, allowing that to develop over the field, taking advantage of all the attention paid to Xavier Hutchins at the wide receiver. Now we see tempo out of the Cyclones. And it's going to be Brees Hall up the middle. Short gain on first down. And can I can I tell you how nostalgic and, and giddy I get when I see old college football video from the 90s? And even the early 2000s looks grainy now. And it just it gets my football juices going. I watch my games from 2012 and they look grainy at this point, but they don't look nearly as good as when Ricky Williams is the one on that film. A, a titan in the world of college football and definitely at the running back position. How would Mike Golick Jr. call his game, his own game? Limited. Slide protection <laughs> right for 57 at right guard in blue and gold. Big play there again to the big tight end, and now we're seeing the Stars get involved for the Cyclones. Purdy to Kohler, first and goal, Iowa State. Getting a lot of single high safety looks right now from Texas, and so they're taking the opportunity to get these big bodies in those seams, and now down here is when you take the biggest advantage of it. They love getting a couple of these guys. We see at the bottom of the screen here, Chase Allen, Charlie Kohler, both have the ability to create a mismatch for you against these linebackers. So Saner in the backfield, Brees Hall 
Gonna try to be patient off the left side, nothing doing. Caden Stearns led the way for Texas. We saw this happen for Texas, their first drive at the beginning of the game. Stall out in the red zone, have to save for a kick right now. Iowa State's got to capitalize on this opportunity. Remember last time, they got down near the goal line, false start in the red zone, brings them back, takes them out of what they want to do. Pick up six or seven here to one of these tight ends and put yourself in a favorable third down. Left the three points on the board at the half. A Sally missed the field goal. Purdy over the middle, quick throw. That to Saner. Now third and goal. Just a gain of three. And it's the same deal we've talked about for Texas, trying to get those mesh concepts going in the middle of the field. Give these guys enough space so if they get zoned, then you can sit down and throwing to a 6'6", 6'7", tight end, just humming in there if you're Brock Purdy. Texas's red zone defense has been good today. Third and goal. Purdy. Has to roll out. Can't find anyone and forced out of bounds after everyone was covered. That is Keandra Coburn, the big fella. Again, putting the brakes on a big Iowa State drive. Big athletes in space. All 348 pounds of Coburn. And it's a three-man rush. He's just working. The coverage downfield shrinks in this area, the low red zone. How bad do you Ooh. want Keandre to be wearing number zero? He deserves it. He does. He's worked this hard <laughs> for that body and this production to wear the number zero, the crown jewel in college football. This and he year. worked really hard yesterday. Now a 29-yard attempt for a salad. And that one's going to be good. But again, a good defensive stop by the Longhorns. Iowa State still able to get points down seven in the third. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. First college football playoff rankings released Tuesday. Bevo probably had a big day yesterday. I feel like every day is a big day when you're Bevo. That's true. 20 to 13, Texas here in the third quarter. Matt Berry, Michael Ola Jr., Chris Budden. No playoff implications in this one, but Spot in the Big 12 Championship. Something Sam Ellinger is trying to do for the first time in his career, which is win a conference championship, and Iowa State hasn't done so since 1912. That is Jamison on the kick return, and some good field position for the Longhorns after a nice kick return for Deshaun Jamison takes it out near midfield. Coming into this third quarter, the story of the game has been the big plays out of Brennan Eagles. Four catches, 127 yards, been a go-to guy for Ellen. And just the way he's able to use his body at the top of these routes, Matt, 6'4", almost 230 pounds, shields the ball so well away from defenders here. This has been Sam's go-to, and it's steadied this offense in a way because it allows them to then ease up get a better box count, get fewer defenders up front, teeing off on their running backs as they try and continue to build on that element of their game. Averaging nearly 32 yards, a catch is Eagles. Ball right at midfield. We'll see if we get Texas tempo again. Ellinger pass tips. That was head of the way of Eagles. Mike Rose. The all-everything linebacker gets the tip. Outstanding recognition. We see that area, that hole in the field is where the RPO game, the run-pass option, tries to take advantage of. That time, he's got the athleticism and the size to recover and get a hand on that play. Incredible job. You can read Ellinger's lips there as Eagles went by him. He said that was there. See if they don't come back to that later in the game. Play clock down to five. Ellinger gonna have to hustle. Gets the playoff to Bijan Robinson. Able to get out of the first tackle, 
and make something out of what looked like it was going to be a loss when I seen Young had him in the backfield, but Robinson able to get a gain of two. Those are the moments there. We talk about Brees Hall on the other side being able to make a guy miss in save space for Bijan Robinson. Six foot, 220 pound true freshman. His ability to shrug off tackles, unbelievable. Now third and eight. Texas just one of four on third downs. Ellinger directing traffic pre-snap, has time. Gonna look deep and that's overthrown. Intended for Joshua Moore, who's had a quiet day. Just one catch for 11 yards and a fourth down for Texas. Talk so much about this Iowa State defense, the 3-3-5, drop eight coverage there. So only three guys rushing. Sam's got all that time, but you see every window. Again, these guys are tied together on a string on the back end of that defense, all working, coordinated with one another to take away those explosive play windows for this Texas offense. So Tariq Milton, and it's a fake! Cameron Dicker's gonna fake it, and it's read perfectly by Iowa State. Cade Brewer was the receiver. They dial up a fake punt, and no one for Iowa State was fooled. What great recognition out of the Cyclone special teams. Just being ready and aware, and these are the things you go over all the time in the special team rooms. They're not the sexy part of the game plan in this area, but making sure you're dialed in each and every play as Rory Walling does an unbelievable job. Staying engaged, understanding the personnel that are in there in that punch shield. It's not big offensive line bodies there, it's their starting tight end. So we'll see what the Cyclones do with the field position. A little bit of momentum. Purdy's going to go over the middle. Has a receiver wide open. Charlie Kohler has come on in the second half. And all of a sudden, here's Iowa State moving the ball again deep into Texas territory. Great run after the catch by Charlie Kohler. And a great job in the play design there. They motion Brees Hall across the formation and all the safeties, the linebackers' eyes go up. They suck up thinking he's going to be the focus of the play. And you get the preseason first team All-American in space and now in great scoring position. And all of a sudden, Kohler and the tight ends and the big plays out of Iowa State. Can they convert this time instead of three? Punch it in the end zone to tie this game. Under a minute now in the third quarter. Purdy the fake to Hall. Pocket collapses. Purdy gets out of it and wisely slides down. As Taquan Graham missed a tackle to let Purdy kind of get out of the pocket, get a little something out of nothing. Three yards there for Purdy. Moro Ajomo that time doing a great job applying pressure from the left side. Just bull rushes Sean Foster, the left tackle, into the lap of Purdy. And Purdy just able to make something out of nothing in that situation. So we're down to what will be the final play of the third quarter. Barring an incomplete pass. Purdy again pressured. Flag on the play. Osai was there with the quarterback pressure. Booth official Matt Austin with us. Matt, what do you see? To me, it looked like it should be intentional grounding. The quarterback might have been outside the tackle box, but he did not get the ball to the line of scrimmage. There was a receiver sort of there, but I don't think it was even close to the way he semi spiked the ball. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The contact by the defender affected the pass. Holding offense number 55. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. See how quickly those boos turned into cheers? Got the okie doke on the penalty well, call there. Time down. <laughs> they did. The Texas front four doing a great job of applying pressure on their own. If you look at Taquan Graham over the right guard, 
in that spot. He's the one that's able to draw the penalty there. Jeff o Joseph Osai is certainly incredibly active. But all across the board, they're not having to bring extra rushers to create pressure on Brock Purdy in this area of the field. Let your defense cloud up the windows in the red zone. Dolik Jr., one thing I didn't factor in for the final play of the third quarter was the old untimes down. So here we have it. Purdy over the middle. No one there incomplete. And that will do it for the third quarter. Texas trying to stay alive in the Big 12 race. Iowa State trying to make program history. Going to be a fourth quarter coming up on ESPN. quarter here at Austin, Matt Berry, Mike Gola Jr., Chris Budden in a game that will have a lot to do to decide who heads to the Big 12 Championship as we take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary and it's been about the consistency of the quarterbacks. Brock Purdy and these tight ends for Iowa State have been making hay in the middle of the field so far here. Up over 100 yards for Charlie Kohler. And then on the other side, Sam Ellinger getting involved in the running game as Texas got down to the red zone. I think really the difference from first half to second for this team. No touchdowns yet in the red zone for Iowa State as Purdy is going to look that way. And it's going to fall incomplete. Intended for Kohler. Five catches, 114 yards for Charlie Kohler. Couldn't grab that one. So again, it's going to be another field goal attempt for a Sally and the Cyclones. And Matt, we were talking about this off air, starting to become the story of the game here. Red zone possessions ending in field goals for Iowa State and touchdowns for Texas right now. And as Iowa State's tried to keep this game kind of in tight, a lot of body blows on this one, tight end shots in a running game, you've got to capitalize in this area or else it might get away from you. 37 yard attempt for a salad. And the kick is good. 20 to 16. Now Texas over Iowa State. And if you like football, this is, this is the best week of football of the year. You've got college football, then you've got week 12 of NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. As the countdown crew gets you ready. So much news going on around the league. And then Monday night, Battle of the Birds. Russell Wilson of the Seahawks taking on Carson Wentz and the Eagles. Coverage begins Monday night, countdown 6 p.m. Eastern. A lot of NFL quarterbacks have gone by way of Austin Westlake, which is where Sam Ellinger went to high school. Apparently, they didn't have protein shakes when Drew Brees went there. You can see the development of the Westlake, uh, the Westlake weight room program as the years <laughs> have gone along. For my money, Matt, Sam Ellinger, the best arms on a quarterback in college football since Brady Quinn left the field for Notre Dame. Really? Suns out, guns out for Ellinger. All day. Looks looks every bit of the part, has played like every bit of the part today in a fun duel between two of the best quarterbacks in this conference. How about Drew Brees' face mask? What a legend. Good for him. Hall of Famer starting from way back when on Friday nights. So Drake Nettles to kick. And that one stays in bounds as Deshaun Jameson get a field it, try to make some Iowa State defenders miss. Can't do it, shy of the 20. There's some extracurricular activity. And so now the latest pride of Austin Westlake. Gonna bring his Texas Longhorns back out of the field. Sam Ellinger grew up wanting to be in this spot, wanting to be the quarterback of Texas, wanting to lead this program to championship level heights told us this week, one game, win, on to the next one to see if they can't get to the Big 12 championship. First and 10, Ellinger to his left, 
Going to take a shot over the middle of the field. Ball hangs up in the air. Falls incomplete. Let's go down to Chris. Guys, one of the things they appreciate about Sam Ellinger is that he puts his body on the line every single play. He's had so many bumps and bruises, a calf, a quad, a hand, his torso. We asked him when was the last time he felt 100% and he gave us an eye raise. He goes, I forget what 100% feels like. Yeah, Chris, the smirk that he gave us when we asked him about that is that you've got to be kidding me. Second and 10, plenty of time for Ellinger. Able to escape the pressure, good pickup block. And it's going to go on the stat sheet as a gain of three, but the escapability to make that play go from a big loss to a gain of three is exactly what he's good at. We talked about it on the open when plays break down, the ability to evade pressure. Now on third down for this Iowa State defense, Jaquan Bailey's got to start to show up. Number three, one of the best pass rushers on this group, needs to get some pressure on Sam and needs to close the deal, not let him get away. Corral, one of the most elusive quarterbacks in college football. Will McDonald provided that pressure. Third and seven now for Texas. Ellinger looking left all the way, throw, caught, Eagles, first down UT. He's been the guy all afternoon. Five catches, 143 yards, and a big conversion for Ellinger and the Longhorns. This is the true freshman, Bijan Robinson, trying to run hard, protecting the ball, gain of two. This front three is starting to become active for Iowa State on the defensive side here. I thought we were going to see more of that tempo start to become consistent for Texas on offense. It's been one of the best opportunities for them to spring runs as Bijan is back in the backfield. So now second and nine, marked as a gain of one. Ellinger designed run, able to read the block, and a good run. That is Sam Ellinger patiently weaving his way for a gain of seven. A couple of designed edge runs for Ellinger. Get out in front of Denzel Okafor, big number 78 at right guard. Doing a great job tracking his linebacker, sealing inside. And Ellinger, for a quarterback, such a unique ability to actually play off the blocks downfield, run with some vision. So empty backfield now, third and two. Keep an eye on the draw potentially here too. Ellinger going to keep it. Wasn't designed, but still effective. First down, Texas. Let's go back into the studio and Kevin Agandi. Yeah, you know, Nagandi, I'm glad you brought that up because I could just see Sanchez in studio right now doing push-ups, and then there's going to be an Instagram picture we all regret later in the afternoon. Tales old as time, Matt. Thirst traps in 2020, especially during quarantine. They're going to run the trap here on the run. Roshan Johnson spelling Robinson, and there's a flag on the play. Sanchez, he's got those Southern Cal arms, though. Different between Southern Cal arms and Texas arms. A little motion. Offense, number 13. He was on the line of scrimmage and is moving at the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. We're going to back that up five yards for Texas. Tired is expecting to go back downfield again. This has been like an NBA Jams game between Sam Ellinger and Brendan Eagles on one side. Who was your duo at NBA Jam? Mark Price and Brad Doherty back in the day. It had nothing to do with the shoes either. They were just good. First and 15 after the penalty. 
Ellinger sees the space, pulls it down. Tackled by Jake Hummel. Gain of six. This is the beginning of a great college football Friday. Coming up next, Notre Dame, North Carolina, Kirk Curb Street, Chris Fowler on the call. Something to be said about the ACC in that game. Plenty in front of us here in this Big 12 matchup. Now second and nine. Empty backfield for Ellinger. Forced out of the pocket, gonna go across his body, and that is Sam Ellinger personified. Caught by Jake Smith, able to get out of the pressure, throw across his body, first down, Texas. Just a great job working back to the ball on this quarterback, buying time against the three-man rush. You get four verticals going up the field. Here comes the tempo out to Robinson, able to shake a couple of defenders. And Bijan Robinson, flag on the play towards the end. I think they're going to get Jake Smith for the hook out here on the perimeter, trying to throw a block. Holding, number zero, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. Tariq Black had a Fumble earlier in this game when Texas was driving, now caught there for the 10-yard penalty. Again, stalling the drive with penalties is Texas. 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, getting down near the red zone. Got to maximize these opportunities. Stop shooting yourself in the foot if you're Texas. So Black heads to the sidelines, now first and 16. Ellinger pressured, steps up, able again to avoid the rush and read his offensive line perfectly. And what again looks like a potential sack turns into a positive game for the Longhorns. And from the neck up, being able to help his crew before the snap, points out and saw a safety rolled over 35 at linebacker. He's coming. Tempo for Texas. Robinson, nice game. Third and short. Man, to have a quarterback like that that sees the whole field. Dirk Kerstetter, his center's played a ton of football. Their O-line can set the protection, but Sam comes up and can override. He can see things and remind him. He looks at that safety rotation for an Iowa State defense that's going to try and make everything look the same and then change right before the snap. A great job of reading and identifying by Sam. Whereas Iowa State, no touchdowns in the red zone. Texas, three trips, two touchdowns. Here again, Ellinger designed run off the left side and brought down just short of the first down. So fourth down, up four, eight and a half left in the fourth. I think you keep your foot down on the gas here. Fourth and short, this area, high percentage play on fourth down. You've got a quarterback that's a run threat. You've got all the makings of a team that can take advantage of these situations down in the red zone. Roshan Johnson in the backfield. Ellinger out of the shotgun. He keeps it, and that's going to be close. And I think Iowa State may have held Ellinger short of the first down. By that spot, Matt, he's going to be short. And I like the call in that situation going forward on fourth down. But you're going to watch Mike Rose, number 23 at linebacker, come in and meet the running back in the backfield, force Ellinger to cut back inside where all the rest of the buddies on that Iowa State defense are. Mike, Mike Rose, such a physical presence for them. Mike Rose, Jaquan Bailey, able to get penetration up front. And this might be the nose of the football short of the first down for Texas. Cyclones defense holds. And Brock Purdy no, no. gets the ball with an opportunity to take the lead. Just over eight minutes left. Don't go anywhere. A good one here in the Big 12.
here. Knife underneath, and then you remember Philip Rivers trying to make a tackle from his back unsuccessfully for the Colts? This is how you get it done right here. Bailey getting into the legs of Sam Ellinger, scratching and clawing on the short yarded situation for a turnover on downs for Iowa State. I'll tell you what, this is just a good football game between two teams who have Big 12 championship aspirations. Iowa State, an opportunity here after some great defense. Brees Hall up the middle for a gain of five. And Matt, I know it's a tough situation there, but I like the call of going for it. To me, fourth and one in modern football with an offensive line that's been working better today and a running quarterback, that's like doubling down on 11. No matter what the dealer's showing, I'm ready to ride in that situation. And we've seen great teams on Saturday and Sunday live in fourth and short situations like I that. I would counter a field goal, puts you up 23-16. And your defense done a good job keeping Iowa State out of the end zone. But now it's history because Purdy and the Cyclones now moving the ball, flag on the play, covered by Deshaun Jameson, intended for Sean Shaw. Pass interference, defense, number five. First down for spot of the foul. Gets here a little too early, coming through the back of the defender. You can see right here, Deshaun Jamison, we know a dynamic returner, one of only five players in Texas history with a kick return touchdown and punt return touchdowns in his career. That speed showing up just a little too quick. Though. Love those dual side athletes. Jamison gonna have to shake it off now. Five penalties for 40 yards for Texas. Been pretty clean. And that's Hall on second and five. And boy, it has been the Ke Keandre Coburn show on the inside. You see him just locking out offensive linemen on that interior and getting to play with his hands on the offensive linemen, his eyes in the backfield making life difficult for Brees Hall and company to get gains on first down that keep them on pace. So now second and nine after the first down following the penalty, gain of one for Hall. Purdy to fake, the roll out, caught. And a nice game by 82, Landon Akers. Now they can start to get back into what they do. Tight ends in the middle of this field and really the middle of the deep third. We mentioned the game of NBA jams. On the other side is the Brock Purdy and Charlie Kohler show so far today. A great catch by Landon Akers there. But they want to find 88, 11, 89, all of these guys in these middle gaps behind the linebackers in front of the safeties in this Texas defense. So another first down for Iowa State up the middle on first down. Osai brings down Hall, clock ticking, six minutes left. And this is what this offense majors in for Iowa State. Finding these little scenes, taking what's there. Brees Hall, for all the gaudy numbers, leading the nation in rushing, is a guy that's gonna take what's there. He's flashy when he has the opportunity to be, but he does a great job working within the blocked offense. You mentioned Charlie Kohler, big game. Saner having a nice game. Purdy to the outside. And there's Xavier Hutchinson calling his name for the first time this afternoon, bringing up a third and short, gain of five. Third and short, we've seen plenty of getting Brees Hall to the perimeter on this defense, whether that's motioning him in from the outside in these spread sets. So this a big down for the Texas defense as Iowa State looks to convert down four. Purdy climbs the pocket, can't find anyone, brought down. Jawan Mitchell brings down Purdy, bringing up a fourth down. Another four-man rush for Texas. That ability all day to get pressure with four has been the difference. It allows Juwan Mitchell and this linebacker core to play downhill. So Iowa State will punt. Joe Riviera on the punt for the Cyclones. We just talked about how athletic Jamison is. Can he do something special 
here on special teams. It's gonna be a delay a game on Iowa State. Prior to the snap, delay game. Offense, five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Matt, we talked about before you mentioned that fourth down decision, kick, your defense had done such a good job. I would argue the other way that fourth and one going out there and going for it with your offense is a bigger sign of confidence in your defense, saying we trust what you guys have done all day today. If we give you a sudden change situation, you're going to make the best out of it the way Texas did there. And they did. They made their head coach look good for the gamble. Rivera's punt. Fair caught by Jamison. So just over four minutes left. Texas ball, a four. ABC is presented by PlayStation 5. Play has no limits. In part by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. And Duluth Trading Company. Tough and genius workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. Sam Ellinger, one of 16 seniors being honored today on Senior Day. For more on Ellinger, down to Chris Budd. Yeah, you're curious how much burnt orange runs through Ellinger's blood. Well, it goes back to his dad. Both of them were part of the Silver Spurs, which are the caretakers for Bevo, Dad. Ross back in the day and Sam as well. A family that truly, truly loves this town and loves this university. That is awesome. What great pictures. So first down for Ellinger, the give to Bijan Robinson. We're now at the four minute mark, both teams at three timeouts. Ellinger said, look, the 12 championship's still right there. We just have to take care of our business. They got three games left, this one against Iowa State, then both Kansas schools. They went out, they are in. Meanwhile, Iowa State, plenty of time and timeouts. Second and six, Ellinger, the play fake. Gonna take a shot deep, and he misses Jake Smith. Had him beat, couldn't take advantage. Now let's take a look at Ellinger, who's a finalist for the William B. Campbell Trophy, presented by Mazda. 3.42 GPA, marketing major. Two-time first-team academic All-Big 12 selection, raised nearly $200,000 to distribute to local Austin charities during the pandemic. When you talk about a player who's every bit of the community, Ellinger, not only a leader on the field, a leader off the field, along with a number other of these Texas Longhorns, tries to go over the middle, and it's gonna be ruled incomplete. Josh Moore, the intended receiver, give Tavon Kyle credit on the coverage, quick, Three and out for the Iowa State defense. Kyle does a great job navigating through all the trash. They try and get him picked on the other side of this one. They're in man coverage all the way across on that play. And Tav Tavon Kyle finds a way to come up key on that third down, give their offense another chance at this down the stretch of the game. Tell you what, both defenses have had to step up here in these last couple of possessions. Each of them have done so, and now it's going to be Iowa State's turn as Tariq Milton deep to receive the Cameron Dicker punt. So fair catch for Milton. Here comes Brock Purdy. Just over three minutes left. Take a look at the college football playoff rankings presented by Allstate. So many things at stake as we're in the last weekend in November. Brees Hall off the right side and a big play for Brees Hall on first down at Iowa State. And you take a look at the top 10 right here. We heard from Kevin, Notre Dame, North Carolina, certainly a big one coming up after us here. A lot at stake for them. Got the Iron Bowl this weekend. Alabama and Auburn, see if Gus Malzahn has any more magic left in the tank for that one. Those first rankings certainly provide a lot of conversation around the country as we're now under three minutes. Brock Purdy back to throw. Has a receiver wide open, Dylan 
Shainer, the big tight end, comes up big for Iowa State. We saw him limping around earlier in the game, and you see it happen again as Sanders headed off the field. But a big gain, 16 yards for the Cyclones. Normally such a great blocker for them, and this is the second time we've seen this for him. Coming to the perimeter, looking at the defensive back, coming up like he's going to block him, and then slips right past him and gets a play there. You hope he can get back on the field and in the game. This tight end group been dominant for Iowa State today. Been so good in the second half. Purdy to throw again. Over the middle again, a tight end. This time it's Kohler. We talked about Ellinger, a Campbell Trophy guy. Chase Allen, a Campbell Trophy nominee earlier this year in that tight end room. Kohler, a 3-9 GPA mechanical engineering major. And that time going downfield, the precision dissecting that secondary. They've really been working the seams with these guys all second half. As Kohler gets a blow here down in the red zone. But they've got to capitalize. So how about those three plays for the Cyclones trying to play their way into the Big 12 championship? You had Hall, you had Saner, you had Kohler, and now you've got first and 10. And it's Brees Hall again up the middle and Iowa State knocking on the door to take the lead with a minute half left in the game. Texas. So Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, out. and the Iowa State Cyclones trying to make history first and goal after this. Now second and goal. Ball at the Texas three. Iowa State all alone in first place in the Big 12 in a win today against Texas, a place they haven't won since 2010, would all but assure them a spot in the Big 12 championship game on December 19th. Purdy to Hall, and Brees Hall gets in the end zone. However, there's a flag on the play. I think that's going to be offside from the defense. Offside, defense, number 98, lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. And how about that? Iowa State has taken the lead with a minute 25 left. Brees Hall, three-yard touchdown. What an answer by Brock Purdy in this Iowa State Cyclones offense. Great surge from the left side of that offensive line we mentioned. A Joe Moore Award midseason honoree group, the best offensive line in college football every year. And that time, being able to work on the backside, those big tight ends getting down. They've been catching all these passes, working as blockers to get Brees Hall in the end zone. And a Sally's extra point is good. They have been struggling today in the red zone, have had to rely on field goals throughout the game. And when they needed it most, they got big plays out of Kohler, Saner, Brees Hall. And that's what the math tells you. All alone in first place in the Big 12. And a minute 25 away from all but stamping their spot in the Big 12 championship. But first things first, the defense is going to have to stop Sam Ellinger on senior day in Austin. This is the matchup we came to see. Iowa State, a place that has built a reputation on defense, that 3-3-5, coming in, making everything look the same but different, playing aggressive up front, going up against a quarterback, playing his final game in this stadium. Grew up looking for this moment, the opportunity to lead a two-minute drive to win and keep their hopes of a Big 12 title alive. Brace Hall just shy of the 100-yard mark. Coming in, we had said that he'd run for over 100 yards all eight games. He's rushed for 100 yards against every Big 12 team. And now Deshaun Jameson. Back to receive Drake Nettles' kick. Jameson from the five. Brought down just short of the 25-yard line. 
you can't ask for much more than this on the Friday after Thanksgiving with what's at stake for both of these schools to come down to the final minute 20, two timeouts left for Texas. Iowa State has been the story in the Big 12 this year. Needs a defensive stop. Sam Ellinger needs to lead his team to victory. What more could you want? Iowa State, you're built for this on defense. This is what you came into this conference to stop and for Texas on the other side. Just the same, Mike Yurst, which we talked about, tempo is a natural part of what they do. And with a veteran quarterback, it Taylor makes it for this situation. Iowa State is going to take the first Iowa of their State. three timeouts. Another first time out of the half. In the second half. All right, coming up next, tonight. ABC. Just the start of a good day of college football. Notre Dame, North Carolina. Kirk Kerbstreet, Chris Fowler on the call of that one. And tonight, 7.30 over on ESPN. 15th ranked Oregon taking on Oregon State. Both games, as always, available on the ESPN app. 12 getting a late start to their season is Oregon, maybe USC, the best opportunity for a playoff berth. But both of these schools on the field now trying to get that berth into the Big 12 championship. And you just saw one of the best opportunities downfield for Texas all day has been number 13, Brennan Eagles, Sam Ellinger's favorite target today. So Ellinger to throw on first down, pressure. And a flag on the play as Ellinger forced out of bounds by Orion Vance. Holding. Offense, number 70, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. And Matt, this is a matchup to watch on this final drive. Watch Jaquan Bailey, one of the best pass rushers, if not the best pass rusher on Oklahoma State, matched up with Christian Jones at right tackle, who's had some issues one-on-one -on -one in these similar situations throughout the season right now. He's got to bow up big time and try and give Sam the time and ability to go downfield. But that matchup right here at the bottom of your screen is going to be the one to watch here as we bring this home. The first and 20 after the penalty. Again, a little bit of pressure. Ellinger throws incomplete, intended for Jake Smith. Second down. Such a physical secondary, and that's the beauty of this defense for John Heacock and ISU side is they don't give you a lot to do on this defense. They want to be able to rep everything and let you play fast in situations like this. Tavon Kyle on the coverage. Second and 20. Ellinger, plenty of time. Looks left, throws left, caught by Brewer. So gain of eight, bringing up a third and 11. Pass rush looking a little tired right now for Iowa State. So Sam's going to have the time. You have the chance for some of these deep developing crossing routes. But again, this offense loves get you going towards the sideline underneath this secondary. Matt Iowa Campbell going to use another Go timeout. Their second. Their time second. Out of the half. So we're under a minute to play here. And what will shape the course of the Big 12 for the rest of the way, Tuesday night, 7 Eastern ESPN. The exclusive reveal of the college football playoff rankings. Reese Davis and the guys going to break them down from top to bottom. Top 25 rankings, always a good discussion point. At the last show on Tuesday, the first one last Tuesday. And as we start ticking down these days, end of November, early December, the games get bigger and the conversations certainly get louder. Third and 11 here again, we see a lot of action crossing in the middle of the field here, trying to spring somebody open. As you know, Iowa State's going to be back off the ball, just trying to keep everything in front of the sticks right now. Texas two timeouts. An empty backfield for Ellinger. Quick throw over the middle, that's Whittington, who's going to get the first down, Jordan Whittington, Big conversion for the Longhorns. Move the chains, first down. And now you're seeing the tempo get up and go as the chains get set and the clock starts again. 
field goal to tie, touchdown to win. Ellinger forced out of the pocket, has a man over the middle. That's Roshan Johnson who's going to make a man miss and get out of bounds. Heady play by Johnson to get out of bounds after getting the first down. Great individual effort in the open field there, making one miss, getting out of bounds and allowing this offense to take a breath and look to the sideline. 38 seconds, two timeouts. Ellinger time has Johnson again out of the backfield. And he's going to be left shy of the first down. Clock still ticking. Haven't heard a timeout yet by Texas. And you see the frustration there. Why has no one called a timeout? They've got two. Texas called their second timeout of the half. Clock operator, please put on 27 seconds, please. 27 seconds. 30 seconds in length. <laughs> so that one on the officials, no one stopped Thank the you. clock yet. I'd imagine Tom Herman had been furiously calling timeout as we see Cameron Dicker warming up on the sideline now. We know a big moment in this game, Matt, the fourth and one down in the red zone earlier for Texas. They elect to go for it, stopped on downs. That field goal could have evened it up. Getting ready to see if they have a chance here late to do just that. The wind working in favor of Dicker. Ball currently on the Iowa State 43. So one timeout remaining. Texas again has to win today and then beat both Kansas schools to get into the Big 12 championship game. Iowa State, if they hang on to win, all but guaranteed a spot on December 19th. Second and one. Ellinger pressured. Able to get out of it, gets the first down, and gets out of bounds. Get so another with, first down for Texas. Gets by with a little help from his friends. Ends up in the arms of his right guard, Denzel Okafor, manages to get outside. A complete Houdini act right there in the pocket as it looked like everything had collapsed on him. Ball now at the Iowa State 36. Ellinger looks deep, has a receiver. It is dropped, intended for Brennan Eagles, who has been his big play guy all afternoon. And the timing just a bit off there. Great job by Lawrence White coming up, being physical into the body. Right idea from Texas, though. Everything towards the sideline now, trying to make sure you've got the opportunity to kick this game time field goal if all else fails. Ellinger, quick shot to the sideline, and what a great defensive play. Jake Hummel able to knock that down, intended for Jake Smith. So third and 10. 10 seconds left, down three. And you imagine we're gonna see something similar yet again here. What an effort by Hummel. This linebacker core so athletic and active for Iowa State. Can they muster up some pressure? Can Will McDonald, one of their pass rush specialists, get a rush on Sam Ellinger on third down? So Ellinger has to be quick here, able to avoid the rush, pressured, and Ellinger's brought down by Latrell Bankston. And Texas has to use their final timeout what a great job by Bankston in the Iowa State defense. Texas, so the third and final time out of the half. We talked about McDonald at the top of the screen, but Bankston just keeps working. And the only place you can't get beat on the inside in clock that play. We've seen Sam Please make so much game work. Clock in three seconds. Getting out of the three pocket. Seconds. An unbelievable expert effort play. Latrell Bankston again, his second time in the backfield meeting Sam Ellinger this game. Thank you. That group that Tom Herman raved about when we talked to him for Iowa State up front. Money for them down the stretch here. 
so three seconds left. Cameron Dicker. An opportunity to send it to overtime or Iowa State can be one step closer to a Big 12 championship game. Career long, right on the money here. That ball on the 40 yard line currently. Going to give him a chance to go out and match that. 57 yard attempt for Cameron Dicker. Can he send it to overtime? But Iowa State's going to use that final timeout and let Dicker think about Iowa it just State. a little longer. Call the third, the final timeout of the half. 60 seconds in length. It's rare in the world of college football that we get to say this, Matt, but again, this is right at his career long. This is a club that he's got in his bag, a big time moment. And Iowa State's going to make him think about it a little bit longer. And again, we showed a second ago, wind at his back. Leg strength not going to be an issue. Going to head over to the net. Get a couple more swings in. But this game lived up to everything that we thought it would. You've got Iowa State, who's been a remarkable story and what Matt Campbell's done for this program. Haven't won a conference championship since 1912. First place all alone in the Big 12. Then you've got Texas, despite a couple of hiccups, control their own destiny as well. And here we have it. The Friday after Thanksgiving, the final of this game is going to come down to a kick to send it to overtime or send Iowa State back home as winners. <laughs> Snap, clean, kick on the way. Good! And Iowa State wins in Austin for the first time since 2010. And the dream season continues for the Cyclones as they are now one step closer to playing for a Big 12 championship. What an effort by Iowa State as Cam Dicker's kick Sales left. Had every bit of the distance. Just sailing left on him. You mentioned having the win there to help everything working in his favor. And Matt Campbell on the sideline gets ready to celebrate this team as we mentioned. This now gives them an almost certain opportunity to play for a Big 12 title this year. I tell you what. What a college football game this was. Congratulations to Iowa State, and a big season continues. Final score, 23 to 20. Notre Dame versus North Carolina coming up next after these messages.